Hey YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here and we're back again for some more pauper action. Um, so after talking to Devin Goad a fair bit on YouTube following my last video, um, I, we discussed and came up with the idea of Lotus Petal being quite a viable thing in pauper bogles. Um, I didn't actually know this was legal, but having found it out, I'm pretty eager to try it. So Lotus Petal does a few things. Um, obviously it adds one mana to your mana pool um, but this can allow us to do some pretty funky stuff such as a turn one Silhana ledge walker which makes Silhana a little bit more viable um, additionally we can filter an abundant growth onto an ash barrens and play a hexproof creature turn one or my favorite of which is uh throwing a utopia sprawl onto the forest and then being able to play creature plus aura which seems pretty strong um additionally it will allow us to cast our three mana auras on turn two as well so that's nothing to shy away from obviously armadillo cloak is probably a stronger turn two play than ancestral mask in both cases um, but it's pretty exciting to be exploring this in my opinion so to make way for this we minused out the spider umbras um, we also minused out the commune with spirits and we bump back up rancor to four armadillo cloak and mask to four um, sentinel's eyes was three or four of and we've reduced that to one as well and we've upped cartouche to four so sideboard is a continuation from last league we we're very impressed with crimson acolyte and that's going to be getting showcased again here today uh, we've also got standard bearer uh, scattershot archer gut shot young wolf and i'm holding it on to that one of flaring pain probably that should just come out and be a gut shot though for consistency sake all right, here we are for match number one. Lost the Dyro versus Ryan Bajaris. Um, sounds not keepable. So that one is looking good though. So we'll go ahead and keep this. We'll throw one Rancor as we have a surplus and we'll get into it. And our opponent is on Elves by the looks of it. So uh, that's not a good one to lose the die roll against. That's uh, going to be pretty pretty hurtful, pretty troubling. Uh, maybe if we draw some for uh, forest we can empty out our hand a bit but likely just going to lose this whole match all right so our opponent had another setup turn so likely next turn they're going to be going a bit silly um, we do find abundant growth which is like semi nice um I, I i don't know it's a it's a little bit awkward here we'll start by abundant growth on the planes and then we can Utopia Sprawl. Unfortunately, we like didn't have an opportunity to net a mana there. Um, so set up turn for us as well. No attacks from us. Uh, next turn, we can Rancor plus Mask attack, and then <laughs> it, it's going to be an uphill battle, I'm sure. All right, so opponent played out Korean Ranger Timber Elf, uh, followed by Winding Way, drawing four cards. Um, and throwing down, or was it three cards maybe? Oh, I guess it was just two. I, I can't count. It's just creatures that go into play. Um, Cartouche, really nice draw. Um, so we kick things off with Mask. We can get an attack in here. We should, I suppose, count our opponent's damage. So opponent at seven elves, um, eight here. Plus this creature here gives effectively plus six, so that's 14 damage currently. They're top decking. Um, this is going to be a good opportunity for us to get aggressive and attack. They can't activate their creature yet. All right, let's throw down Rancor. Be a nice attack for nine, and then maybe if all the stars align, we can kill our opponent next turn. All right, the opponent is sending in with almost everything. Uh, I guess they're going to just assume we can't kill them on Crackback. Obviously, we've already shown we've got the Trample here. Um, unless they have a way to instant speed buff the whole board. Uh, it appears they do not. We go to six. All right, and no blockers from my opponent. So we're going to get a very rare game one win here against Elves. Um, it's pretty remarkable. We do go for uh, overkill where we can, just in case they have some sort of interaction I am unaware of. 
All right, and attack in for that victory. Oh, opponent un untaps the Timberwatch Elf. Okay. Oh, Query and Ranger. No, not Query and Ranger. Which one was that? <laughs> Guess they can plus itself. Uh, we're still going to kill it and deal a lot of damage. We've got two blockers on the side. Well, just as well we went for the line as we did because opponent had the interaction. Yeah, so that was the Korean Ranger active by returning a forest. Um, of course, now they don't have a way to buff their creatures instant speed. So, a block here, we'll block out on the Quirion as well. Looks like four damage wide, mutagenic growth will kill us. And we're currently still alive, opponent can seize. We're on two health, they're on five, one attack to win. All right, so our opponent's not really going to have anything to kill our creatures with. If they had any dismember or gut shots, they'd be boarded out for certain against us. Um, we probably want to bring in Standard Bearer as an efficiency swap for Ledge Walker. Uh, mostly because Standard Bearer, we can redirect that active that gives plus X plus X for the number of elves. So Timberwatch Elf, uh, Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of elves in play. So we can redirect that, and that will slow down their clock. We might just take out one Ancestral Mask, because it could be a little bit slow. Alright, so our opponent is keeping their 7. We'll do the same with ours. This looks like a very strong 7. Um, obviously, it's about as aggressive as we can be. We don't have a good way to deal with blocking our opponent's creatures, uh, but that just happens, right? Alright, so we'll go and throw down a Bogle. Pass the turn. Alright, opponent takes the turn to cast Timberwatch Elf. Uh, we draw Forest, so that's fantastic, which means we can Utopius roll for the free aura. We'll Utopia for white. Now we can throw down our Rancor and our Ethereal Armor. Start that attack. Try and race our opponent again. Alright, so our opponent uh, dumped out Blitclaw Rangers plus Nettle Sentinel into second Blitclaw into Wandering Way. So Wandering Way has found two elves. Uh, honestly, it could be a lot worse than that. Um, an opponent chooses to cast the Priest of Titania, but not the Elvish Vanguard. They would have been able to cast both and put in a counter on the Vanguard if they played that first. So, interesting decision making there. Um, we can see our opponent's got six Elves on the battlefield here. Um, so, count that as... I guess we can count that as seven damage pretty easily once they play the Vanguard from hand. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, that's 13 damage currently. Um, if they don't draw anything. So we're definitely in with a good spot to win this one. Um, I think we hold off an Ancestral Mask here and we go ahead an Armadillo Cloak. Uh, now we just play out the Abundant Growth to give that extra plus one off the Ethereal Armor. We'll get a big attack which will get us some life gain. Alright, Lotus Petal a little bit late to the party here. It's first appearance, not a swell one. Alright, and we no blocks from the opponent. We deal 10, gaining 10 life. Alright, opponent uh, doesn't want to see any more concedes on their turn without any action. Um, obviously our life total is high. They don't know about the Ancestral Mask, but we have assembled Trample, Lifelink, and First Strike. Um, they've got a Timberwatch Elf, but the Timberwatch Elf can't grow their elves big enough. Um, they don't have a query and ranger, I guess, to untap and use the activation a second time. So we take a, a game one with an unlikely victory against elves. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back for match number two. Uh, we lost the die roll against Fonda Paradox. Opponent is keeping a seven card hand. We have no creature, so we'll mulligan. This is looking a lot better. We'll keep this one. Um... Probably ditch a Lotus Petal, play around a potential Edict deck. Alright, well, we find a Lotus. Um, well, it looks like our opponent might potentially be on Fairies. Or, I guess, a Mono Blue. I guess we can see. Play out our creature. 
And here I think we play around for spike because we're already like reasonably far ahead. Getting a 2-2 two -two in this spot's really strong. I don't think abundant growths and or are they gonna look to counter with spell starter sprite anyway? Brainstorm. Alright, so opponent blind uh opponent uh, sat there for a while while they were deciding on the brainstorm. We see ice tunnel, so maybe a blue black, a Dimir Fairies deck. This we'll wait and see. Um we can also note that our opponent is currently uh, unable to use, cast a counter spell, so it's a perfect opportunity to go for Cartouche Solidarity. Opponent does, however, find Spell Pierce, so uh, we're going to lose out on that one. It's unfortunate. Um, I don't think we want to play Scout here and use up our Lotus Petal, so let's leave it sitting there. Just attack for three. Alright, so opponent played out Thought Scour, milling the counter spell and snuff out, followed by. Uh, casting mental note and consider and passing to us so uh, they're allowing us to do our thing here definitely want to get down this hexproof creature now play around any potential main deck edict inclusions attack for seven and opponent plays the Talarian Terror so this is likely the uh, common Demir control deck which is running around at the moment wow and they uh, get a Gurmog out as well that's a bit of a brick wall uh, if we hit Aura there, we would be able to continue to apply pressure, but we're going to have to take a turn off and uh, hope the top of our library helps us out. Any Aura that adds one power will give us enough to attack into their current board state. Alright, so opponent plays Brainstorm into Mental Note, ditching the Snuff Outs. Uh, we find Abundant Growth. Might as well go ahead and cast that one. Guess we can tap itself here in this spot. Make a huge difference. Alright, that puts us to 9 power, so we're almost able to attack. We're still not quite there. I guess we pass the turn back. Probably one of our better draws would be that one of Sentinel's Eyes, because if it does get countered, we can recast it from the graveyard straight away. All right, well, Rancor's a pretty nice draw. I forgot to uh, cycle the Ash Barons there, unfortunately. It's not the end of the world because we do have a Lotus Petal sitting on the bottom of our library that we didn't really want to reshuffle. All right, there's Counterspell to the Grave. Oh, opponent uh, Mental Noted to mill the Unexpected Fangs in our end step. Um, so they can't combat trick one of their creatures bigger. This point as well, another abundant growth or utopia sprawl will be enough to let us start attacking. Now let's cycle this one now. Get a planes for good measure. Opponent knows about the planes. One card, uh, one mana source open currently. Perfect time to throw down ancestral mask and start attacking. This deck doesn't usually. Uh, run main deck Diabolic Edict effects, so it could be correct to put that on the scout so I can attack with two creatures. I'm going to play safe though, I'm now pretty far ahead. And our opponent only has eight creatures like this, so we can start eating them up pretty quickly. Without any blowout cards in the main deck as well, um, this puts us in a good position. Alright, so opponent plays a second Gomog Angler. We've still got 19 power, that's more than enough to attack with. Uh, they attack here for, for 10. We'll let that go through for now. Uh, if we draw another Ancestral Mask, we can attack wide and win, I think. Alright, and yet another Kermog Angler. So, our opponent is uh, heavily favoured here, but we do top tech the Rancor, which is going to be just enough to uh, top us over and get us that win. Alright, so in our opponent's uh, 60 card deck. They've got eight creatures and they drew five of them. So that's just a little bit above par from where they would normally be. Definitely the top of our library helped us out a lot though. All right, so in our opponent's sideboard, from the looks of things, it's Shana's Edict and Shrivel that we have to be worried about. So Shana's Edict, um, sacrifice a creature with for two mana at sorcery speed, flashback of seven. 
Um, and shrivel all creatures get neg one, neg one until end of turn for two mana sorcery spade. So definitely we're gonna want young wolf here. Wow, ancestral mask was such a superstar there. I probably shouldn't be boarding it out, but I'm looking at maybe boarding out one copy here, possibly two, to accommodate these young wolves. All right, so let's board out the two mask and a lotus petal. I don't see anything else I really want to cut. Obviously, cutting creatures. It's a little bit questionable, and we have a really good aura suite here. Cartouche is a standout. Um, Sentinel's Eye is also a big plus because it gives us that vigilance stat, and we can recast it following a counter spell. Can help with sequencing sometimes too. So starting hand is looking pretty strong. Um, we have our mana. We can we have access to white mana because of abundant growth, and we have protection from edict effects uh, because we've got two creatures here. Uh, our opponent does have, as we said before, shrivel potentially, as well as a main deck suffocating fumes, both of which give minus one minus one. Um, this is a keep. And it's likely we play into the first Edict by doing Rancor on one creature and attacking, so we don't lose both our creatures to a Shrivel effect. Of course, we do just hit the Young Wolf, and that's a pretty tempting one. Pretty pretty good find as well. Alright, so in our opponent's turn, they are casting Brainstorm. I think it's pre-draw step, but I could be wrong. Um, oh, it's in their main phase, I believe. So they are tapped out and they're going to let us do our thing. Uh, so that thing is going to be Rancor on the creature and play a Young Wolf. Attacking for three. Alright, here comes Thought Scour as well. We find Utopia Sprawl. Um, that's a bit of an interesting one. <laughs> Alright, let's throw down our Utopia Sprawl. Uh, we're likely going to be playing this one on white. Opponent spell pierces Utopia Sprawl. That does not seem right. I guess as far as they're concerned, they can see that we don't have white mana. We can just Abundant Growth here, get our card draw, access to white mana. Now we get a safe attack for four. Alright, opponent with another Thought Scour. There's Suffocating Fumes to the Grave. Uh, and here comes Talarian Terror. So that's a big fatty. Don't currently have access to first strike. Um, well, our hand is sort of forced. We do have to armadillo cloak here. It's not a good point to attack though. Remember our opponents missed a land drop as well. This is their turn five and they're stuck on two mana. All right, opponent does choose to start attacking in. This likely means they have a second creature they can play. All right, another Talarian Terror. <laughs> any, any more opponent? <laughs> we do have a few chump blockers, but that's going to get old fast. All right, so opponent now passes to us, and uh, we do draw a forest. So, I guess we can look to resolve a creature first up. We can't play around Spell Pierce anyway, so. Uh, we'll see if they want to counterspell the creature. Of course, they save the counterspell there. Uh, <laughs> it's not looking too great for us. I think at this point, we probably jump lock with the young wolf to grow it. And possibly with the scout. Alright, so opponent attacks with two creatures. Five cards in hand here. Uh, let's just block with the young wolf for now. Let that undying happen. If our opponent's playing Devour Flesh or um, Diabolic Edict instead of Chainer's Edict, having access to Instant Speed Edict would blow us out. So that's a safer way to do it. All right, uh, there's the Gurmag Angler. Four cards in hand still from our opponent. Potentially still another counter spell to come. Um, hopefully we can resolve some first strike. We'll see. All right, our deck uh, continues to troll us a little bit here. We still can't really throw away our creature. Uh, and unfortunately here as well, our opponent does not have counter spell up. So at worst, it would be spell pierce and would be able to resolve an aura, which is two mana or less. As it is though, uh, <laughs> sad looking board state. 
All right, opponent chooses to attack with two creatures. So fairly simple blocks here. I think we block with the scout, block with the young wolf. This gives us the best protection from uh, any more suffocating fume type effects. All right, an opponent hard casts the deep analysis for four mana, drawing two cards during their turn. They're going to let us top deck if it's something good it's something good and my goodness is it something good well spell pierce still gets us fingers crossed all right and we get to resolve it so suddenly this match takes a turn we still don't have access to first strike but the life's going to start swinging back in our favor uh, no blocks from the opponent we put them to two uh, we might be able to attack wide we're one point of damage off attacking wide Excuse me. Uh, we have Trample on our creature. <laughs> we have Lethal. <laughs> Don't know what I'm talking about here. Alright, uh, opponent with the second main consider. No attacks from them this turn. And <laughs> a fourth fatty for the opponent. Alright, so they're still in it. <laughs> They're still in it for now. We can't just attack with everything and win anymore. Top of our library gets us close. Still not quite there. So 13 damage. If we attack with our big guy, um, we're not quite going to get there. That will trade off with two creatures. We'll get Rancor back. We could reset Rancor on the ledge walker. Or we could just wait it out, attack twice with Ledge Walker, kill our opponent the safer way. Um, in, a, in a fashion where we don't get blown out. Alright, so here comes the Suffocating Fumes. Opponent is going to shrink our board state quite substantially. Here is the Chainer's Edict as well. Goodbye, Young Wolf. Um, they're at a point where they can play one more land and flash back Chainer's Edict as well. So that's really not good for us at all. Um, <laughs> rats. So that's not what we want to see. Let's pass the turn back. Maybe our next top deck is better. Maybe our opponent just has double Chainer's Edict in hand. All right, well, there's a Chainer's Edict, fresh one. And, uh, wow, triple Chainer's. They are uh, 32 cards through their deck, but that sucks. <laughs> GG's to our opponent. We're so close to stealing that one. Just uh, just a damage short, right? Or two damages short. Suffocating fume cycled. Fortunately, we have a game three to get there. All right, so with our game three, do we want to change anything from sideboarding? We did bring in three Young Wolf um, in between games two and uh, one and two. Taking out the Ancestral Mask as a 2 and the Lotus Petal as a 1. Um, I don't want my Aura Count too light, but I think we've got it at a pretty good place at the moment. Um, I think we just run it back. It could be correct to maybe minus on like Sentinel's Eyes or an Abundant Growth or something. I'm just going to run it back then, though. Alright, well, we see this hand... It's got a creature. It's not a creature we love particularly. Um, our Aura Suite is actually really, really nice. We've got a good clock. We've got Edict Protection. We've got Rancor. It is semi-likely that our opponent took out their single-targeted creature removal hate. We can stick a Young Wolf turn 1 and turn 2 we can Cartouche to protect it. Um, that's assuming we hit a second mana or... Yeah, I think this is a mulligan, um, as much as I'd love to keep it. Wow. Well, this is a sad hand. This is a mulligan as well. We can assemble Bogle plus Cartouche turn one, and then, like, hang out to draw lands. That's an attack for two. It's not a very good clock. Abundant growth on potential forests could get us there, though. It's good card draw. You know what? Let's let's test Lotus Petal out. Let's see how good it is. We'll put back the Utopia Sprawl. <laughs> we'll keep this zero land hand in Bogles. Um, <laughs> uh, 
and uh, <laughs> we'll see how much the top of our library helps us and how much we get smacked by our opponent just tempoing us out. All right, we find Rancor, so uh, <laughs> it's not looking too good from the start. End of turn, our opponent brainstorms. All right, please deck, land, let's go. Ash Barrens, that's not the land we're uh, hoping for now, is it? Um, that's a bit uh, a bit unfortunate. All right, let's continue. Let's attack. Uh, unfortunately, I think we have to play this. The only point where us playing that is incorrect is if we draw one of our, our one remaining Lotus Petal. All right, opponent uh, wasting no time here. They've... Uh, They've cast one Brainstorm, and the Chainer's Edict is coming in hot. So this likely means they have a second one in hand, or they're working towards the second one. Um, we draw a plane, so we're being, like, super punished on this Ash Barons here. Um, unfortunately, I think we just lose this one. It's, like, an outrageously risky keep for me. Um, I was hoping to high roll it, but obviously did not. So, my bad. <laughs> Hopefully that's not ruined the league for you. All right, we'll see one more draw step, and then I'll likely concede. Uh, well, that is technically green mana, so let's basic line cycle for green. We get our forest, play our forest. We'll abundant growth on the ash barons. Uh, I guess we should play it on the plains, and then the second one can come down on the ash barons. Opponent has the spell pierce regardless, though. All right, let's uh, let's see if our opponent lets us resolve it the second time. All right, well we'll concede here. This was a stupid hand to keep, and uh, we definitely got punished for it instead of being rewarded, which is probably best for me making the correct decision in the future. All right, welcome back for match number three. We won the die roll this time. Uh, this hand is looking pretty capable. We'll go ahead and do it. Um, so there's no need to lead off on our Lotus Petal tech just yet. You can wait and see what our opponent does. Ooh, scary. Black-white deck. All right, so let's go ahead and play our Lotus Petal. We'll filter the Ash Barons into a Plains. Now we can... Cartouche plus Sentinel's Eyes. Next turn we can Glade Cover Scout. So we'll give us good protection here. Uh, we're still a mana short of doing our Ancestral Mask as well, but seeing a black-white deck, we play around the black blowout, right? <laughs> Find it with the Bajuga Bog. All right, well, we haven't seen an Edict yet, and this gives us a really good chance to resolve our Ancestral Mask. Apply the pressure, so that's what we'll do. Fortunately, we can't attack with the warrior token. Our uh, opponent is rocking the main deck Dawnbringer Clerics. That's an annoying one. So these sorts of decks normally run Ephemerate. Um, we've been fortunate enough to just draw another Ancestral Mask. So uh, let's force the issue. We'll mask. We'll attack. We'll put our opponent in an awkward spot where they might need to block. All right. So they choose to block. Only black mana floating, so no ephemerate antics there. Opponent plays Omen of the Dead. Oh god, it returns a creature. Get get lost. Can't we, like, uh, have some exile wording on one of our auras or something? I don't like this. Alright, black mana up again. Dawnbringer destroying mask again. And they play a land gaining a life. Uh, I guess we start attacking with the warrior token. It's only bad if they have suffocating fumes. They're unlikely to have that if they're rocking Dawnbringer, right? So we do get three damage through here, and we can resolve our protection. All right, opponent with the uh, core sky fisher and bouncing the cleric. Man, we are getting slapped here. All right, so our opponent, Core Skyfishers, returns, plays it, gets rid of 
the cartouche and now we're dead in the water with nothing to play that's unfortunate we've been completely tempoed out with a string of pretty mediocre creature draws and obviously our opponent destroying an enchantment in three consecutive turns <laughs> definitely did not help all right now here come the chainers edicts so <laughs> our opponent's deck is literally designed to destroy ours uh <laughs> it's not looking good uh, that's a little bit better. Uh, if our opponent doesn't have another Diabolic Edict, uh, maybe. Block here, kill the Skyfisher, trample one. Reload on our other creature. So, I thought our opponent was a matter short of doing this. It costs seven mana and I'm counting six. Okay, this gate taps for two, so... Miscounted because the gate threw me off, but I don't think we have much of an option anyway. Um, so that's Edict Flashback. We luck out and draw a scout, so uh, I'm incorrect in not playing Rancor. We can get punished by Duress. We're very unlikely to win the game anyway. All right, opponent Paladin takes the initiative. Whenever one or more creatures a player controls deals combat damage to you that player takes the initiative venture into the undercity the undercity search for basic land counters scry trap fight lose five life go to creature treasure token draw a card okay so like none of that stuff really matters our opponent's creatures are too big so we'll just concede all right so this deck is called Gotham Ephemerated. Um, main deck hate includes four Chainers Edicts and the four Dawnbringers Clerics, which our opponent can recycle. It doesn't look like this list has the Dawnbringer Cleric main deck, but this opponent, uh, this list has it in the sideboard. Opponent obviously has it main deck. Um, other things to consider Duress, Devour Flesh. Um, Arms of Hadir, so <laughs> should be a fun and a horrible game too. All right, so bring in our Young Wolf. I think we take out the Ancestral Mask as a three and submit and get into it. Um, if we're getting to cast Ancestral Mask, the game could potentially just already be over. We'll keep this hand. Um, not guaranteed white mana on turn two, but this is definitely above average with double cartouche. Uh, we can turn one Utopius Brawl to play around a Diabolic Edict, which is probably correct. So we'll turn one the Utopius Brawl for white. And then if our opponent plays Duress, they can only take one Cartouche away. No turn one play for the opponent. So we will Bogle plus Cartouche. We find the Ethereal Armor. Gives us a nice aggressive attack in future turns. Alright, so opponent with Therabian Inspector. So we might as well lead off with Abundant Growth here. <laughs> Still uh, a little bit bricked on land at the moment. That sucks. We could cartouche a token and attack with both. And then we're guaranteed two damage through. Seems a little bit iffy to me. So, Ethereal Armor. I, I guess we're playing Ethereal into Dawnbringer Cleric here, which is bad. Um, but it's our most aggressive attack. Our opponent chooses not to block. Um, also, Slow Rolling can help us. Slow Rolling the second cartouche can help us because our opponent has things like Arms of Hadir in the sideboard, which give minus two, minus two to all creatures. Alright, we'll kick it off with an attack. Bringing on mana obviously sucks here. <clears throat> so, play out our scout. If... I guess it's guaranteed to survive, right? So we'll uh, throw down Cartouche on the second scout. 
Usually you want to load up one creature. We don't currently have Trample. Um, we have it in hand, but we can't play it. All right, well, we just get blown out. Our opponent has Suffocating Fumes, so we lose all our guys. I guess the correct line was Enchant the Token. Play out the second creature afterwards. Uh, we've been completely schooled here. Um, unfortunately, us missing on our land drops did not help the situation at all. And likely going to concede. I guess it's not quite a concession yet. Um... <laughs> So our opponent's rocking pestilence. So they played that and activated it, and our creature died. So um, <laughs> I guess after drawing Ledge Walker, we we wait for pestilence to disappear. Maybe. I mean, yeah, it's it's an active. It's an instant speed active. I, I don't see how we get around this. Let's concede. All right, welcome back for match number four. Hopefully we can have some better luck this time. Uh, we lost the die roll. This time versing face roll storm. And uh, we're mulliganing to five here at least. All right, no, no capable hands. I guess this is our first one. <clears throat> so go ahead and keep this one. All right, and looks like we lost the die roll up against a fairy's opponent. So... I think if we draw a Lotus Petal, we could have a chance. If we don't, yeah, it's probably going to be too slow. Like, we're probably going to just get tempoed out. If we won the die roll, maybe there's a chance. But mulliganing to four against a deck with this much value, it's going to be extremely difficult for us. All right, opponent activates Ninjutsu, so that's something. Please let us hit mana. All right, deck is trolling us, so we can resolve an aura, but uh, might not be the one we want to. We really want to hit land here. That's the most important thing. All right, so that sucks. <laughs> Opponent plays the Fairy Seer, puts two cards to the top, attacks, so no blocks from us, and draws a card off the... And we miss on land again. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I don't know about you guys, but I smell a spell sort of sprite, so <laughs> let's just get it over and done with. <laughs> Never mind, uh, it's a four spike. All right, I'm going to concede this is wasting everyone's time. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, we multi four and got tempoed out on mana against a uh, deck which is t very tempo dependent. So our good cards here are Scattershot, Archer, and potentially Gutshot. Gutshot can kill their creatures, obviously. If you kill a fairy on the attack, uh, uh, on the stack of the spell starter stack trigger, you can potentially counter it altogether. Scattershot, Archer, obviously just good. Um, so I guess we want to remove maybe two Ancestral Mask. I think Armadillo Cloak is really strong. I don't actually see any other auras we really want to remove. Maybe Cartouche can be trimmed on. I really like most of what we have. Guess we don't have to bring in Gutshot. It's a bit more niche. It doesn't kill that much in their deck. All right, let's take out the mask and uh, Cartouche. All right, my deck must hate me because no creatures still. <laughs> I, I'm like specifically designing these decks with fairies in mind and trying to beat fairies. And uh, <laughs> our decks aren't being very helpful. All right, so we can like turn one empty our entire hand, which is nice. <clears throat> And then hopefully we just uh, top deck something after that. <laughs> top deck some action. So imagine this, but you have another two cards in hand to follow it up. That's what I'd like to be doing in the matchup. All right, that's uh, possibly the worst card we could literally draw. Uh, we'll go ahead and attack. We might as well attack with both. Uh, they're not going to trade off with the warrior token, so... It's an extra point. Went behind. <laughs> Opponent naturally flips to an annul, so uh, we're probably losing this game too. 
Uh, absolutely no setup needed for our opponent there. All right, we'll swing back for three. All right, this time Delver does not flip. Third Delver. <laughs> Wanna attack into my warrior token, please, opponent. Give me, give me something. <laughs> oh, now that's a card. All right, so that's an interesting one. I think we cast our Lotus Petal here. Pretend that's what we drew. Attack with both creatures. Get three damage through. And then after our opponent counters an aura, we're going to look to play the Scattershot Archer and get it underneath. All right, so opponent hard casts the Moon Circuit Hacker. Attacks with the... Uh, Flip Delver. And I guess we're going to just attack back into them here. This is uh, four draws and we haven't seen an aura. <laughs> Isn't that sad? I'm not complaining about the Scattershot Archer though. That's a nice one. We trade off the Warrior token. Sure. You got Mutagenic Growth. No. Nope. All right. Well, it's a really good point to resolve our Scattershot Archer. So we'll do that. <clears throat> And we'll resolve our Burgle. All right, so opponent flips two Delvers to the Mutagenic Growth. Um, if they don't have Counterspell or Spell Starter Sprite and we can resolve a second Scattershot Archer, we can Machine Gun the board. Uh, it's likely curtains for us, though. Oh, and they cast the Mutagenic Growth. So it is curtains for us. Um, top of our library, not helping us. Well, those were two very unfortunate hands where we mulligan into very few resources and couldn't get there. I, I'm not sure this if we kept a six or a seven, if this matchup would go the same way every time. All right, everyone. Welcome back for the final match of this league. We won the die roll versus Pointy Kitty. Sand is keepable. It's not the best tempo-wise, but we have some decent creatures in it and some decent auras. So we are versing a Swamp deck, which uh, <laughs> I'm sure everyone's thrilled about. We do find the Cartouche, which is nice. Um, I think the play is we probably want to go in on Silhana Ledgewalker. So we'll attack for one. We'll play Silhana Ledgewalker off Forest. Then we'll cycle Ash Barons next turn to resolve Cartouche. And I almost had a heart attack there. I thought our opponent was giving the board neg one. Uh, neg one, neg one. Instead, it is the squire enters the battlefield to explore. Opponent reveals duress, buffing their creature. Find armadillo cloak. I like to see that. That's a nice one. <laughs> All right, let's cycle. Get our planes. Play our planes. Uh, we have to, like, think about how we want to sequence this. Playing around two Diabolic Edict effects, I'm going to play the Cartouche. Um, our next turn, if we don't draw mana, is just play Armadillo Cloak. Um, so, at which point, we'd be netting one extra damage if we played the Ethereal Armor, but then we're, like, one turn off of casting our Cartouche. So, if our opponent were to edict this turn, edict next turn, could be troublesome. So what's this do? Enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a card from their hand on top of their library. All right, doesn't really matter what, we'll just be drawing it back. I guess it's card disadvantage, it's sort of like discarding, but we get to keep what we're putting back. All right, so throw down. It's the same damage if we play Cloak and Mask. This nets us for life. And if we draw a forest next turn, we can cast both Mask and Ethereal in the same turn, which we wouldn't be able to do with Armadillo Cloak in hand. All right, so here comes the Duress. We knew about that one. Ethereal Armor is gone. Bajuga Bog is active. Sorry, uh, Ancestral Mask is gone. Okay. 
opponent attacking. Not really concerned about our life total. We've got a lot of life link coming our way. All right, so we'll play our Utopia Sprawl. Play it on white. This stage of the game, it doesn't really matter what color we play it on, but we're off to the races, attacking for eight, two turn clock, our opponent can't block our creature. Oh, an opponent rocks the Grey Merchant of Ashfell. Um, Asphodel. So that's going to gain them some life, keep them in it for a little bit longer. Uh, we're still like two attacks and they're dead though. All right, opponent attacking for four, no blocks. Not interested in that. We draw a ledge walker. Okay, I'm gonna leave this ledge walker in hand. It can't be discarded to dress. Um, if they give our other creatures neg one, it'd be good to have another creature going on. All right, so our opponent is destroying our tokens. So I guess we'll aim ours at our opponent's face. Uh, we're kind of screwed against double edict. Our opponent does not play it though. Um, maybe they had the single edict and uh, decided not to show it to us. All right, so looking up a deck list here real quick. Um, similar to our opponents. So the creatures we don't really care about. Uh, we can see our opponent runs main deck Chainer's Edict as a four of one suffocating fumes in the main deck and uh, suffocating cube fumes in the cyborg along with pestilence um so usual story of uh <laughs> bring in young wolves i suppose all right so we'll bring in our our young wolves and we'll take out the ancestral mask and as a two and the lotus petal as a one all right so if only we had a lotus petal it could be capable <laughs> it's not the greatest hand anyway so we don't mind mulliganing that um this isn't great either. Opponent miles to six. I mean, mulliganing is the last thing you want to be doing against these kinds of decks. Here we are. Um, opponent keeps a six. I mean, we've got to do better than this. Like, this with a, a Cartouche of Solidarity, maybe. Like, Young Wolf with the Cartouche of Solidarity. But, like, you know. <laughs> Let's be real. All right, so we mulled a five. We'll bottom forest plus Ancestral Mask. Keep double creature in face of edicts. Um, no castable auras. <laughs> Lovely. <clears throat> All right. Opponent is rocking divest here. So they're going to go ahead and uh, make us discard a bit. We lose one of our creatures right off the bat before it's done anything. And it returns. <laughs> yeah, have a looky at that. <laughs> So opponent cycles Ash Barons for Swamp. Cast Duress. All right. Goodbye, Ethereal Armor, I suppose. The jig's up. Nope. Goodbye, Armadillo Cloak. Okie doke. Strictly better stats, but we are further away from casting it, so it's a bit bizarre. Um, I don't really want to run out our second Bogle into Suffocating Fumes, so we'll just attack. All right, so opponent during their turn, sign in blood, drawing a couple of cards. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm down for casting Young Wolf. I'll attack for one. And here comes Chittering Rats. So that's pseudo card disadvantage. And like, this is worse than us. Well, that is card disadvantage for us. Um, this is worse than us putting it in the graveyard, honestly. Like, we need to draw from the top of our library and we just not. So no attacks from us this time. Phyraxian Raga enters the battlefield. They draw a card, losing a life. Shot. Sure. So you can now start shooting down our young wolf. Suppose us emptying our hands is actually edged towards because there's chittering rats. It just sucks playing into suffocating fumes. Like, <laughs> that really sucks. Um, yeah, I guess we'll throw it down. All right, uh, worst nightmare is here. Put ethereal armor back in case they try and duress us afterwards. And we'll take a turn. All 
Oh, we draw our ethereal armor. Again, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll just leave it in hand. Opponent uh, grows our young wolf for us. Whoops, I should have pointed that at them. I messed up. Wouldn't have mattered, though. We're losing this game anyway. We've got game three to make it up. All right, here comes Grey Merchant. Uh, <laughs> draining for a stack of devotion there. And uh, we can kill a Chittering Ratch, but then our opponent can put it back on top, potentially, which isn't nice. Yes, we got to block somewhere, somehow. Mm. Yes, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're super dead. We're at one life, and our opponent has all this going on. Armadillo Cloak in hand still wouldn't, like, get us there. Sure. All right, let's bring back in one mask, and uh, I guess I'll ditch a Lotus Petal. These effects are probably not very good against a deck which uh, operates as black decks do against us, and of course we uh, have to mulligan. <laughs> no creatures whatsoever uh, into being creature flooded. I mean, the tilt play is keep. The correct play is probably mulligan again to something better. Um, like, we don't have our colors here. Even if we resolve Ancestral Mask, we still have a 1-1, one, one, so Hand's just got nothing going on, and to 4, I guess we keep this one. Ditch, ditch, we have to ditch 3, um, losing Rancor is not good either, but I think it has to be Rancor. Can our opponent... Uh, beat a 2-2 two -two with uh, one one creature off to the side. I'm sure they can. All right, at least we can play the card. So, <laughs> opponent uh, cycled Ash Barons game one there, turn one. Turn one, game three. Um, at least, like, Chittering Rats isn't going to be putting stuff back on top of our library, which is about the best we could hope for at the moment. Hopefully, this blanks. No, it does not. They bring in the lifelinker. I think this was a cyborg card. They bring it in against us, and we get tempoed out because we brick on being able to cast our three mana spells. <clears throat> All right, here's Chittering Rats. That's literally my worst nightmare here. Um, so goodbye any chance of us <laughs> being able to resolve our cards. Uh, it's so unfortunate. We just resolve this Armadillo Cloak, we are probably favoured to win, and now we just get tempoed out for like five turns, so... It's truly the power of mulliganing to four, which this deck seems to do far too frequently. Alright, so we draw our cloak for the third time. Uh, <laughs> pass it back, we can't attack, our opponent has two blockers, that's not going to fly. Grey Merchant could come down, I mean, honestly Grey Merchant's better than the third rats. Uh, opponent attacking with everything. We get to block a rats here. Could be like getting set up into our opponent omen returning rats. Could be combat tricked. Okay, they're ninjutsuing the one off the side. So they're gonna. <laughs> what the fuck is this deck, man? Suffocating fumes. Alright. Opponent had it all, and uh, we weren't able to resolve anything. <laughs> Alright, so I'm trying something a little bit different, guys. Um, I am going to be tracking my data for a little bit while playing this deck. Um, so the data I'm going to be tracking is what decks we're versing, um, main deck hate from the opponent, our die roll win rate, and then we can control the... Uh, then we can look at the die rolls one with the game ones one. So <laughs> you can see here we've uh, won two die rolls out of three. Um, and we won one of those game ones. So a game one win percentage though, we won three out of our five game ones. So that's a pretty good game one win rate considering we versed three uh, black decks essentially. That's uh, pretty scary. Um, and yeah, so... I think, I think it's pretty interesting here. I'm also tracking mulligan data. So you can see here with mulligan, I've just writing down, written down the starting hand number. So 
a lot of the games where we've won, we've kept six or more cards in hand. Um, <clears throat> where <laughs> the games we've lost, we've mulliganed a lot, which makes a lot of sense. Um, also tracking sideboard hate from the opponents. So I'm going to be tracking some data for a while, seeing where it leads, seeing what data we can extrapolate from that. And uh, let me know if you think it's a good idea. So as far as the recap for the league, I mean, no one can be really that happy about going one and four. Not particularly impressive. Um, I don't think that was particularly a fault of Lotus Petals, though. I think that was the fact we versed four terrible matchups. Um, and in the one matchup, which was probably a contest, we mulliganed to four game one and then uh, mulliganed really hard in game two as well. Uh, we mulliganed to five in game two against fairies. So, I mean, it, it's not accurate um, when we get ad tempo disrupted by our own deck's disynergies. Um, as far as everything's concerned, I'm excited to continue testing Lotus Petal. I'm going to be running this main deck for a while. I might make some changes to the sideboard as I go. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty keen to test this. I think it it shores up a fair bit of stuff as we went over at the start of the video, helping us cast our three drops, helping us uh, keep keep Bogle hands where we have Nash Barons or Planes in hand instead of a forest. Um, for that reason, I think maybe I should be cutting a forest and adding one more Ash Barons in. Um, I guess I said I wasn't going to change the main deck. I consider this a fairly minor change because we're not running a commune sorry not commune it is commune because we're not running commune with spirits i'm finding it harder to hit our white mana sources so um, we'll just add up the uh, ash barons by one to help make that a bit easier um, another interesting synergy i didn't talk about um in, in the primer at the start was Lotus Petal actually turns on the escape from Sentinel's Eyes a lot more efficiently than what we've been able to do. Um, so, yeah, Sentinel's Eyes seems pretty strong. Uh, with our sideboard, I mean, there's not much to say. Excuse me. Um, like, pretty much the only two cards that saw play were Young Wolf and Scattershot Archer and Maybe they should be four ofs to uh, try and shore up these difficult matchups. I mean, with the amount of black decks I verse, Young Wolf probably should be a four of. Um, if I cut the gut shots, I remove. Um, <laughs> I, I I remove any removal from the deck, which is something that uh, maybe we should have considered against. Actually, I probably I can't remember if I bought it in the gut shot against elves or not, but that should have come in against elves. Uh, let's try taking out our gut shot and upping scatter shot and young wolf both to four ofs. Uh, maybe I'll remove flaring pain and have a one of gut shot actually. All right, so that's the list we're going to be taking into the next league. Hopefully, surely it cannot go worse than what this one did. I really think the results underperformed how the deck was generally playing. Um, and there were a couple of times where just a damage or two short from getting our opponents. Um, let me know what you think in the comments as always. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, you know which buttons to click. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.